Welcome to Dashing Dish. I can't believe it, but my nephew Easton is starting school. My sister Emily is gonna join me today and we're gonna think of some fun ways to pack lunches. He sure does love his lunch, but let's see if Aunt Kate can pack some nutritious things that are sure to please. We are starting out the day with peanut butter and jelly pancakes. What a better way to surprise your kids on the first day of school than pancakes that are nutritious and filling. Chicken poppers packed with zucchini to sneak in some of those veggies. Crispy sweet potato fries, a great alternative filled with vitamins and minerals that are delicious and fun to eat. And yummy gluten-free animal crackers bringing you back to your childhood. Healthy tips and tricks for going back to school, coming up. Today we're talking about back to school, and that includes breakfast, lunch, and even a snack for back to school season. A lot of moms ask me, what do I feed my kids on a typical school day? And if you have that question, we're gonna be going over some great nutritious options that will cover all the bases. We're gonna start with breakfast, which is a peanut butter and jelly pancake. And what you'll love about this pancake recipe is that it includes whole grains, protein, healthy fats, and even some fruit. And what your kids will love is that it's peanut butter and jelly. I'm gonna start with one and a half cups of old fashioned oats. And you could also use oat flour in this recipe, but I figure everybody has old fashioned oats at home. Two tablespoons of any sweetener of choice, one tablespoon of baking soda. These are our dry ingredients. We're gonna go ahead and blend them together. And so what I did that for is just to blend the oats so that they're starting to ground up and that'll make it much easier to blend when we add the wet ingredients. Then we have a cup of cottage cheese. Now if you don't have cottage cheese, you could also use Greek yogurt, but you don't taste the cottage cheese at all. It just adds a good dose of protein for your kids. And when it comes to back to school, I always say for breakfast and lunch especially, make sure that you're getting your kids a good dose of whole grains and something with some protein because that will give them energy but it'll also keep them satisfied throughout the day. So all those sugary cereals, all those treats that are things like pastries, although those taste yummy, they're really high in sugar and really they're not gonna hold your kids over. So then I added two eggs and a fourth cup of peanut butter or any kind of nut butter that you choose. And we're gonna give this another blend. Okay, so now I've got a little trick for making pancakes and it makes the process really easy and fun. So you just take a Ziploc bag and you drape it over a cup or a jar and that creates like an opening for you. And then you can just pour the pancake batter and it's almost like your own little pancake dispenser that you make right at home. And what I love about this is that you can make fun shapes and do cute little things for your kids with the pancakes. So I'm gonna try and make a heart for Maddie and Easton. We'll see if I can do it. Okay, and then you just fold it over like that. You push all the batter down to one of the ends and then you just snip the end off like that. And let's see if we, I can get a little heart shape going. And kind of just fill it in like that. And this is really cute and fun for kids. And these are the things that I remember from my childhood. I remember growing up on my first day of school that my mom always did something really special for my sisters and I for breakfast. So my mom always made us feel very special and very calm and just really celebrated the day for us. Okay, so once you flip the pancakes, then you wanna cook it for about one to two minutes on the other side, just until it's golden brown on both sides. And these will be great. And what I love about these peanut butter pancakes is they really do have a peanut butter flavor. And then you can serve them with some strawberry or some raspberry jelly on top instead of syrup. So it's a really great way to send your kids off to school with something that's nutritious, delicious, and healthy. 
Coming up next, we're gonna make something that is really fun and delicious for lunches with my sister, Emily. My sister Emily's here today, and Em, I can't believe Easton's gonna be back to school. It's well, crazy. I should say really starting school. He did a little pre preschool class, mm -hmm. but actually starting school this yes. year. It's so crazy. If anyone loves school, it is that kid. It's he true. belongs with people and with friends, so he loves it. He's in his element. And I had the opportunity, Maddie and Easton are only six months apart, to send her as well, but Maddie is the biggest homebody, yeah. quite like myself. And then Easton's a lot like Emily, where he's like, get me around the people. So That's she's right. like, I'm gonna send him to the earliest possible schooling that he can be in. He but loves it. He's doing such a great job. This will be a big step, the fact that it's for lunch. He's yes. gonna be there during lunchtime. Yep. yep, I'm gonna miss him, but he, be he belongs at school with all of his <laughs> friends. He does, he does. So we're gonna make something that'll be perfect for his lunchbox, and these can stay good in a cooler or just even at room temperature for I'd say up to three to four hours. We do use chicken in them, so it's a really good source of protein, and we have some sneaky veggies in them. So we're basically making a chicken nugget, but it's more like a chicken popper, because it's just a little ball with some flavoring, some spices, some cheese, and some ground meat. So I'm starting with one pound of ground chicken, and I'm gonna add a half cup of Parmesan cheese. This gives it a lot of salt, a lot of flavor. And um, I'll have you grate up two zucchini. Sure. You can actually just um, grate it as fine as you want it. If you have really picky kids like Maddie, definitely I would say do the finest grate that you can so that they don't really know it's in there. If you really wanted to um, make it not visible at all, you could even peel the outside of the green so they don't see it, or yellow squash works really good. I found that when it comes to any zucchini recipe, if I just use yellow squash, it blends in really well. She doesn't see green, it gives her a lot of nutrition, and she never knows it's in there. So you just want two cups of ground zucchini, so that's one to two zucchini for this recipe. Then I'm gonna do a half teaspoon of garlic powder, a half teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of onion powder. I'm gonna start to kind of mix this in, and that looks like it's about that two cups. Does look pretty good. So we can go ahead and add that to the bowl. Okay. Okay, so I lined a sheet pan with parchment paper and a cooling rack. If you have one of these, it's great for nuggets or fries because then it cooks it the whole way around and makes it really crispy, not just on the top and soggy bottom, but it cooks it the whole way I around. I never knew that. And then these little ice cream scoops are perfect. I love those, it's my favorite tool in the kitchen. And you can Excellent. kind of just scoop it out and directly like that, or you okay. can kind of give it a little shaping in your hands. Um, do you remember our first day of school when we were little? I remember being nervous. <laughs> yeah, I think that's every kid. I think that's really natural. Do you yeah. think Easton gets nervous? Oh yeah, he even said, Mom, I feel nervous. Even the bravest of them yeah. all, little Easton gets nervous. That's so. why, as a teacher, I knew that all of my students that they were coming in, as excited as they were to see all their friends after mm -hmm. a whole summer, I knew how they were feeling. So I made yeah. sure to give them extra love. I let their parents, granted I was teaching second grade, come in to like see them goodbye. And uh, it's a big day. I mean, there's a lot of emotions for kids that first day of school. Mom would write a note every day. She'd give us a brown paper bag with our lunch, and she'd always put a note in there. And I remember midday, halfway through the day, to open that up Yeah, meant so much. And it just took her a few minutes, but it made us feel very much thought of. It's true. Well, these chicken nuggets are ready for the oven. I'm gonna bake them 400 degrees for about 25 minutes until they're cooked all the way through. And coming up next, we're gonna make a wonderful side that'll pair perfectly with them. Coming up next, packed with vitamins and minerals, these sweet potato fries are a healthy alternative to a traditional favorite. And I sneak in a bonus recipe with easy and nutritious mason jar Lunchables.
When I was a kid, Lunchables were all the rage. You had all the different little compartments to keep things fresh so you can make your own pizza, sandwiches, and more. So you, essentially you can do the same thing with a mason jar. You just take any size mason jar and you fill it up with something that you wanna combine with something else. So in this one, I did some Greek yogurt and I just did plain Greek yogurt, but you could do any kind of yogurt that your kids like. That's going in the mason jar. Then you want to take any kind of fruit or applesauce cup. So this is also a great way to recycle and you empty it out and you clean it out. So we have an empty applesauce cup that's cleaned and to the yogurt, I'm going to add some strawberries, but you could do nuts, you could do any kind of fruit that would go good, granola, anything that you like. And I'm going to cut up the strawberries just so that they're small enough to fit inside the applesauce cup and just enough to sprinkle over the yogurt. Now, I'm gonna take the applesauce cup and I'm gonna bring it up to the mason jar lid and flip it over. So that keeps everything firmly inside that applesauce cup. And then you just wanna screw the lid on just like that. And it stays good in two separate compartments. That way when your kids get to school, the strawberries aren't gonna be watery or mashed or the granola inside the yogurt and they can add it fresh when they're ready for lunch. Some other really great ideas to do with mason jars is our little sandwiches. And again, you can be really creative with this. You could do hummus in the applesauce cup if your kids like hummus. You could do veggies on the bottom. So really, whatever your kids like and you wanna kinda of keep it separate in compartments, this works great. So we have in our applesauce cup some little crackers, some whole wheat crackers. We have some rolled up deli meat in here and also some cheese. And so when it comes time to lunch, for lunch, they can just take the crackers, put some cheese, some turkey on, and it's good to go. It's a really convenient way to pack a really delicious and nutritious lunch all in one, and they just carry it to school in a little cooler, and there you go. The perfect mason jar, masonable lunch. Packing your kids' lunches can be simple, inexpensive, and even fun. It can also be a great way to get kids involved in the kitchen and teach them about proper nutrition from an early age. A healthy back-to-school lunch is comprised of three main food groups, which include a healthy source of lean protein, healthy fats, and whole grain carbohydrates. Coming up next, we're wrapping up back-to-school lunches with a childhood favorite, animal crackers. With just a few ingredients, these gluten-free snacks are sure to please kids and adults alike. Well, we're gonna be making a little treat to go in the kids' lunch boxes, or it could be a snack, after school snack. Do you remember after school snacks? Oh, do I? I think it was my favorite part of the day. You come home off the bus feeling so weary and drained from a full day of school. Do you Let remember what you tell you, ate? my memory of this was we would put on the cooking channel. Yep. We'd watch, what was it called, Sweet? Sweet Dreams. Sweet it was dreams. a show on Food Network a long time ago. It was all about baking. And desserts. And we would eat an entire thing of Cool Whip. I mean, we would just make our own little baking creations. Usually I did. And then I would serve them to Emily. And we would sit there and pretend like we just created something marvelous that was on Food Network. The worst so, is we'd eat a whole tub of Cool Whip. Either that or we made our own Rice Krispie treat. Yes, we Because, I mean, any kid can do that. You put marshmallows in the microwave and then we would make Where was together. mom? I mean, <laughs> this is the question that I have. So if you are a little bit worried that your kids might be making Christ Krispie treats, you might want to make them a snack that they can come home to instead that's actually nutritious yeah. and they'll never know because it's animal crackers or animal cookies. That's right. So we're gonna start out the, the base of the recipe with oat flour. So very nutritious, it's a whole grain oat but they taste sweet and delicious, so your kids will never know. Yeah. So we do a one and three-fourths cup, you can add it to the bowl, of oat flour. Um, and Maddie loves these. I mean, these half cup of sweetener, you can just kinda pick things up and add it. A fourth cup of applesauce, 
I'm adding, and a fourth cup of honey. So she, Maddie loves these and she often makes them with me and she even requests them. They're so good. So this is something, a recipe that your kids are sure to love. Half teaspoon of baking powder and half teaspoon of baking soda. And you can see how easy, simple the ingredients are and also really nutritious. Fourth teaspoon of salt and then about a teaspoon of almond or vanilla extract. And we were just talking about how we, we love almond extract. If you like the flavor of sugar cookies, that's usually what's in them. And so it really does make any cookie you make more like sugar cookies. So we're just gonna mix this together until it forms a dough. Now, um, you know, one of the things about Maddie is it's, it's really easy to get kids filled up on snacks. Yes. And I'm really cautious on filling her up with kind of junk food for snacks or even just snacks in general because then she's not hungry for her meals. So when I give her a snack, I wanna make sure it's really packed with nutrition. Mm -hmm. And these cookies or crackers um, are really a great way to do that and they stay good at room temperature or in the fridge for almost two weeks. Mm -hmm. I love that they think they're getting a treat, but we know it's, it's healthy and it's gonna actually be a nutritious snack for them to enjoy. Yep, that's that's all about the mom hacks that's when right. it comes to parenting. <laughs> you gotta trick your kids. That's so true. we're gonna kind of get our hands in there and mix it so that it forms a dough. And this is Maddie's favorite part. Yeah, these are fun to make with the kids. I know we've done this several times. And um, I know you bought some fun little cookie cutters for them. Yep, I got those on Amazon. So you can just get so any cookie cutters that you want. They don't have to be animal shaped. Um, so any cookie cutters that you have will work for this. And you can make them as big or as small as you want. And I can imagine you can use this recipe for the holidays and just use holiday cooking cutter cookie cutters as well and make little um, holiday shaped ones as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so this dough is coming together and um, you can just kind of sure. roll it out yep. um, and you and the more that you kind of kind of pack things down with your hands it's just like any other cookie dough that it takes a minute to come together you just kind of bring it together with your hands and then you can roll it out now if you find that the dough is a little bit sticky you can always add some more oat flour and if it's too dry, what would you add? Just yeah, if it's too sauce? dry, you could do a little bit of the wet ingredients, so a little bit of applesauce or even honey, Okay. just to kind of help bring it together. Um, a lot of times, too, I'll just add like a teaspoon of coconut oil if I find that a batter is too dry. But this looks perfect. Okay, how thick do you want that? That looks good, just like okay. that. Okay, so now we're just gonna cut them out with these little cookie cutters. So cute. So I know as I plan for Easton's school lunches and snacks, and you were talking about you know, a good source of protein, mm -hmm. what are some protein options that you would recommend for kids throughout the day? Oh, it's a good question. You know, sometimes I just kind of think about what are some really simple but also not too adventurous sources of protein when I think about kids. So things like cheese, yogurt, chicken, beef, if they like it. Um, Maddie actually doesn't really like meat a whole lot. So I have to kind of think more outside the box with her. And nuts, almond butter. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times too, I'll just make recipes where I can kind of hide meat. So I'll do like a marinara sauce and I'll kind of just really finely break up the ground turkey or beef and hide it in the marinara sauce. But it's really important to get kids protein because that's what really helps their muscles grow. Mm -hmm. As far as carbohydrates, that's pretty easy. I think with carbs, don't you think that's easy for kids? Oh, yeah. I mean, but we know that there's like more lasting, sustainable types of carbs, right? It's true. So anything that you're using whole grains is going to be a really good source of carbohydrates. Like these, oh, flour cookies. Right. Um, beans, lentils, um, anything that's whole wheat is good. And then as far as healthy fats go, I would say anything with nut butters, um, olives. If your kids do like fish, that's excellent because that's a really good source of omega fatty acids. Easton loves avocados. Avocados, so yeah. So it's really about picking and choosing 
things that you know that your kid likes, and even if you feel like they're not getting a really wide variety, if you can just find a way to get all three food groups in, then you're doing a great job. And these look really cute, and it's just like regular sugar cookie dough where you just continue to cut them out until it's all gone. And so we, we're just gonna bake these off at 350 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes until they're just set. Okay, so we have our whole spread ready for any kid's back to school day. I think any kid would love all of this. We basically have chicken nuggets and fries, some peanut butter and jelly pancakes, and animal crackers. What could be better? So I want to eat it. That's right. I mean, it sounds good to me. So I'm going to show you how you could put together this these combinations into a lunch. So we have a little um, bento box here, and you can just find them on any website or even in stores, and it's really simple. You just wanna find any container that has different compartments. Um, so Em, you can go ahead and put some sweet potato fries in there. And I did a little bit of ketchup for dipping, and then a little bit of peanut butter because we have our carbohydrates, which is our sweet potatoes. We have our protein, which is our chicken poppers. And then we have a little healthy fat with the peanut butter. And then we'll do a few of these cute little animal crackers um, just on the side. And what you know, I would, was thinking with the peanut butter is you could dip them into, or Maddie just likes to eat peanut butter with a spoon. Yeah. And so do I. <laughs> so that's kind of the perfect lunch there. So cute. And it will stay good for up to four hours. And if you are concerned about it, you could always put a little cooler pack in with it. And the peanut butter and jelly pancakes, you could also serve for lunch. Honestly, it's not just breakfast. I, Maddie eats breakfast all day so long. So do we at our so, house. Another really cute option are these mason jar, little masonables. So they're so basically fun. lunchables, but in a mason jar. And so we just got, did a pizza, a sandwich, and then like a yogurt parfait. So there's all kinds of fun ways that to think outside the box when it comes to kids' lunches. You don't have to just think about the bland, dry sandwich that you put in a little bag anymore. There's a lot of fun ways to spice it up and feed your kids really nutritious, healthy meals as well. For all of these recipes and more just like them, head over to dashingdish.com where you'll find recipes and more to nourish your body and soul.